Hi everyone, quick video this week. I am uh, at the hospital. I had to bring my wife in for some simple tests, nothing serious. And uh, I figured while I'm here, three, four hours, I can find a quiet spot, which I did here in the corner of the cafeteria and uh, make a video. So this is a little out of the norm for me, a little uncomfortable, but so far so good. So uh, I literally just set up VPN on my MacBook Pro, something I've been wanting to do for a while now. So I've literally just VPN into my home network where I keep my, my Lightroom catalog on my Synology NAS. And so I'm all set up and I'm thinking, what can we do? So what I wanna do for this video is just go over um, some tools and techniques in Lightroom you can use to better organize and choose uh, the best photos for your, um, for your imagery. So um, I figured uh, we'll go over some of the compare tools and survey tools and just looking at some of your, your better images and knowing how to identify and choose them for, for processing. I decided to choose um, a set of photos from a recent shoot that I did with some, some friends. So right now I'm working on my MacBook Pro, not my Mac Studio, on a 15 inch MacBook. So I am limited to real estate as you can see, but if I hit the tab key, voila, automatically that hides both panels and it toggles. So hit the tab again and they're back, but for now we'll keep it off. If I select this image and I hit my, my space bar, that will open the image. I'll use my right arrow key to advance through the images. You see this fairy moving through the frame and then it's basically at the end of the frame where, yes, where I stop shooting. A quick compositional tip here. For beginners, when you're composing, the rule of thumb with, with images, with moving subjects, is to give your subject space to move into the frame. So let's take this last image for example here. Now this fairy is almost out of the frame. And the relationship between the, the lighthouse and the fairy is quite different. There's tension, there's an uneasiness as this fairy is about to leave the frame. There's not much space here. So unless you have a good reason for trying to tell this story, I mean, there is some sort of a relationship between these two, but it, it's there, there's definitely tension and an uneasiness. It's not a real pleasing um, composition as opposed to, let me go back to G, I can bring my guide up as opposed to something like this, the boat has entered into the frame. And now the ferry has quite a different relationship with the, with the lighthouse in this instance, right? I mean, it has plenty of space to move into the frame. And, and these two are sort of playing off on each other a little bit better. So uh, you see this a lot in wildlife photography with birds and stuff. You're catching a bird in flight, but the idea is to try and leave some space so that the bird can fly into the frame. But anyway, I'm probably not going to do anything with these images here, so I'm just going to stack them. So I'm going to click this one, I'm going to hold down my shift key, I'm going to select all these, I'm going to right click, go to stacking and group into a stack. But this image is probably the dullest image, so let's go back into stacking and let's just temporarily expand the stack. By doing this, we're not removing the stack. We're just simply looking at what's inside the stack. This is the image I want to see on top of my stack. So you simply just drag it over. And now let's go ahead and collapse that stack. And now I can quickly see the, the best image of the stack. So I'm looking at the next set of images here. I'm asking myself, well, what's interesting here? When you're out in the field making images, you really have to think about some of the attributes um, of the subject you're shooting. And when you're shooting lighthouses, a, a good idea is to start counting the intervals of, of when the light flashes. Every lighthouse is different, and every lighthouse has specific light intervals that are intentional for Coast Guard and for, for, for boaters and, and whatnot. As photographers, that gives us the advantage to know when to release the shutter. Try and think about other ways to tell your story. Ledge Lighthouse has a, a story behind it of being a haunted lighthouse. It's quite an interesting story. And it's, it's not a bad idea to learn a little about your subject. If you understand some of the history, then maybe you can play off that and try and tell a story. And my idea here was to, in a long exposure, so it looks ghostly. Um, you know, the story goes that the, uh, the captain of the ferry uh, had taken the, the ghost of Ledge Lighthouse out to sea. So that was sort of the whole idea between, you know, behind this image. Let's get down to the shots that I find the most interesting, and that would be the full moon behind Ledge Lighthouse. These guys are the four images that I'm most interested in at this point. Now I'm gonna hit N as in November to bring up the survey, or you can simply do it down here. 
and now we can see all four of the images that we selected so that we can survey them. But this is a very powerful tool. Now we're looking at these four images that we're interested in. Immediately I can see that this image has something very unique to it that the others don't. And that is this reflection. It has, it has like these red, whites, and blue in there. This one doesn't, neither do these two. Now we're in survey view, but we can still double click to bring this guy into view. I can zoom in, I can look at the interests, and get this. Instead of going back to G for guide, go back to N, your survey, and it brings you right back to the view you were in before. So you can continue your workflow and say, okay, I like this, that's pretty neat. We can also notice right away that this, I, I, I captured this with more of a red light and a nice starburst. I don't really have that starburst effect in the rest of these. I like this image. I wanna work on the full moon image, but I, I like this a lot and I think there's potential here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just flag that. Or you can hit your P if you like. And now I'm just gonna close that down and watch what happens. We're still in survey, but now we're down to three images here. And say this is the image we wanna work on. You can take this image and you can make a virtual copy of it or virtual copies of it. And to do that, there is a hotkey you can use or you can just go up to your photo menu and you can go down to create virtual copy and there's a hotkey, command apostrophe. Click on that and the Lightroom will go ahead and make another copy of this image. This is not another raw image, it's, it's a virtual copy. It's, it's, you can still do things with it, you can export your, your finishing touches on it, but it lets you have different variations of this image. And what I mean by this is now that we have this copy, we can hit D for develop and we can start working on this if we don't want to make any changes to the other image that we already worked on. I want to see what this looks like in a black and white. So I'm going to bring this into black and white. Now you can see I have two variations of the same file and I can compare them. And speaking of compare, the difference between survey and compare is that compare gives you a few more options. You could only compare two items together, two images, and you press your C or you press your compare view down here and that brings them both up. The beauty is if you lock them with a lock and you go to zoom in, they will be synchronized and you can also move around and you can check each image comparatively while you're moving around on the screen. All right, everyone, um, that's all I got for now. This was quite a different experience for me making a video in a public place like this. Um, I have to say it's been pretty quiet and uh, I got through it. So thanks for watching and I hope you can use some of these tools and techniques in your workflow. Just, uh, just little subtleties, little things that really make a big difference. So have a great week and get out there and shoot.